All right, this video here, uh, uh, I saw there at, uh, I had a viewer post a request on one of my videos there that's on YouTube about this uh, fence on this little router table. Uh, it's a homemade homemade fence. I actually, uh, when I built this fence, uh, I didn't actually build it for this table. I, I had a wing in, a, in another table saw that I had and I initially built this thing so I could clamp it to the fence on the table saw. Bring it over and that would give me some dust collection and, and adjustable fences. But anyhow, I, I modified it to use it on uh, this one and on my extension on my dado saw where I've got where I use my Ancra fence instead of buying the uh, the rest of that Ancra fence system that gives you the adjustable fences and the dust collection port and everything. Uh, instead of purchasing that, I just I modified this one to use on it. So anyhow, uh, let me spin around here. I had a viewer want to see it and talk about it a little bit, so I told him I'd be glad to. There's really nothing exciting about it. It's nothing nothing really special, but uh, the what I would consider the frame would be, you know, this piece here. Uh, it's, it's made out of some plywood that I had laying around. Now this this particular plywood is some that came not even sure, can't even remember where I got it, but anyhow, it's, it's uh, seven eighths of an inch thick, so it's it's pretty heavy, pretty heavy plywood. Uh, but it's not a finished plywood, it's, it's, uh, it's a structural plywood, so you have one side of it that's fairly smooth, and the other side, you know, might not be, it uh, could be various anything, but at any rate, uh, I used some of that and I made what I'd call a frame. And like I said, when I first made it, I made it where I could put a C-clamp over and catch it on the inside here and the, and the table saw fence and, and clamp it together and move it. So that's that's one reason, the design. But I did want a taller fence, because uh, I do sometimes some pretty tall projects and uh, need that extra height. So. Uh, I used it like that for a long time, and then I, I got where I needed the a little bit better adjustment here. So I made these fences that go on the thing. Uh, let me come around here where we can get to it a little better. Now these look strange, uh, and the reason that they do, uh, of course, I just I cut a slot here, and uh, and I. Uh, recessed it and cut it on a taper in here for these uh, taper head screws you can tighten them up and adjust it and I'll show you show you how easy that is so you just run in here with the screwdriver and loosen the screws and then you can adjust it well it's been so long since I moved it yeah, there's pretty good range of adjustment on it put it wherever you need it uh, this top groove right here, that is a, uh, I cut that with a router bit instead of, <clears throat> instead of buying T-Track. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a lot of use for it. Uh, I use that stuff a whole lot. So instead of buying T-Track, I bought, the, I bought a router bit to cut this with. So anyway, that works out really great. It could be a little better. Uh, it would be a lot stronger. If I had used some of this seven eighths plywood instead of this three quarter, and I may some point in time and go back and do that. Although for what I do, this works out okay. Uh, it's it's up on this tall frame, so it don't flex a whole lot right here. And the biggest thing I do with this track is mount my feather board in it. So if I need to hold down uh, on something, make sure it stays flat against the table, I'm able to do that. So let me uh, let me show you that. So this is this is just a homemade. Let me get back up here. Get back here where we can see it and talk about it for a minute. This is just a homemade feather board too. Uh, I needed one and uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. It was just kind of a quick thing. I need to go back and make me some ones that look a little better. But but it, it serves its purpose. Uh, I cut it out and then I used. Uh, bored me a couple of holes right there and then I used my scroll saw just to cut it out. Uh, I think I didn't have a 
router bit or my router was set up for something else, I don't remember now, so I just cut it right quick with a scroll saw. And I made the knobs also. I, of course, I got a T-nut in there, and uh, let's turn them out on the lay and drove the nut in there, so that gives me the, uh, put some carriage head bolts in it, and uh, that's what fits in the, in the track on the fence. <clears throat> so all I have to do to mount it is just slide it up in the track, put it wherever I want it, tighten the knobs there, and that's, that's how the homemade, the homemade uh, featherboard thing works on it. And when I made it, uh, of course you can't tell it. Sometimes you, uh, I'm like everybody else, I got a big mess of sawdust in the, in the floor, and first one thing another. But it'd really be bad when I when I initially made it. I wanted me some kind of dust collection, so uh, I took the two middle braces because you got these on the end. I took the two middle ones and put in here, and I cut them on an angle and I cut this cover to fit it right here. It was just just a piece of MDF, I think it was. Maybe a piece of half inch MDF. <clears throat> and uh, I bored a hole in it where a two and a quarter shop vac adapter would fit right in there. So that gives me my pretty good dust collection. And this one is bolted down to the table. Uh, the, the table, let me get, the table has slots in it. So <clears throat> these bolts here go down through the slots and there's carriage head bolts on the bottom. That's where the original fence for this little old craftsman table, a uh, little old craftsman router table here was at. <clears throat> it was a plastic fence and it flexed like crazy and was just junk. But anyhow, uh, but I needed it multifunction. So these other bolts that you see are hanging in right here, I guess you can see those things. These bolts here in this position, I unscrew these and then I can carry that fence over to that anchor. And these slide right up in it. I can slide the I can slide the thing right up in there, and attach this fence to my anchor positioner. So that gives me the ability to use a really big bit, and, and you know cover part of it and cover half of it. Can't do that with just the anchor unless you've got the other rest of it, uh, <clears throat> rest of the anchor system. But that gives me the ability to do that with this, and then retain that super accuracy. I, uh, now the fellow that uh, uh, wanted to see a little bit about this said he had an anchor so he knew what I'm talking about when I say accuracy. The, the accuracy of those anchor positioners is just phenomenal. Uh, you can, it reminds me of metalworking. I worked for several years in the metalworking machine shop and you can almost achieve that kind of accuracy in wood with one of those things. So, But anyhow, I wanted to be able to mount this to that and use it when I needed it. So that's what these bolts are for. They're they're uh, bored in the right place, and uh, they are uh, toilet flange bolts. Uh, those bolts that you get to to mount a toilet flange with, and, and uh, I think I maybe I filed them a little bit on the edge to make them fit inside that slot on that anchor fence. But anyway, that's uh, and I I just. Uh, I set it up for this little, this little old station here. Uh, of course, on a router table, uh, you, uh, you know, your biggest thing is your fence. To, as long as you've got your router mounted solidly in it, and, and it does a good job. The, uh, the inserts. Uh, I made the inserts for this. Uh, this is one of them where you just mount the, the router just screws to the table, and. Uh, you don't have a plate or anything. You can reach under and adjust it. And, but I, I wanted to I wanted to have different rings so I could have different run different bits because there's no dust collection on the bottom and it makes terrible mess anyway. This gets a lot of it, but a lot of it still goes down. So anyhow, I made me a template and I took my router and I cut me a hole. And then I got over on the lay and I made me some rings. Uh, certainly different sizes was here and uh, uh, started out with just a small one you know and you can make a, a zero clearance out of it then rings gets get, get bigger bigger different sizes uh, but they're easy to reproduce uh, these are just made out of MDF let's take them over to the drum sander and sand them down to the right thickness 
and uh, of course they start life as this, you put a hole in the middle of it and take it over at the lay and then cut it to the right size. And, uh, and oh, and I know what some people are thinking there, they never cut the MDF of those lay tools. True, but I got a duplicator for mine, it's got a carbide bit on it, so <laughs> I was able to cut that stuff uh, with my duplicator. But anyhow, they work really well and it gives you the ability to change out and, and keep your ring for your big bits and stuff. And, a little old cheap, little old cheap craftsman table, and it does really well for what it is. Not a whole lot of money in it. Uh, I've had it for years. One of the I, Lord, I'd be afraid to guess how many years I've had it. To, uh, probably eight or ten. I've had it for quite some time. Uh, but uh, at any rate, it's been for a, been a pretty good while, and it and it served me well, and I still use it. I use it a lot. Uh, I change stations. And we'll talk about this in here just a little bit. Now this is, uh, this is my main router station. I built it, uh, it's probably one of the first projects that I, that I did when I got this shop here. Uh, this is uh, the first router table that I built. And I actually did a little experiment on it, so I'm not gonna point out, but there's a couple of flaws there, but uh, not in the construction of the thing, just in the, uh, in the look of it there, so. But I was doing a little experimenting, but. Uh, I made it in the, of course, we've got slide out drawers. You got router bit storage here, electronics here. Of course, you got access to router here. Uh, and then I've got, uh, got a collector in here, or a funnel that goes out to my dust collector there, and helps with the chips. Uh, more storage, and I uh, keep tools, personal thing, another in there like that. And then routers, i got some more routers and bases, and. That, that kind of stuff down there on the bottom, I, I need to go ahead and fix me a set of doors to go on it. I just can't never seem to find time, but uh, anyway, and what I've got here, and I'm probably not going to change this to be, make it where you can see because I'm in the process of making some doors, but what I've got here is a, I got a fruited fence, and uh, this was, this was the first, this was the first router table fence that I bought. Uh, I'd used one that I'd made up till, till I bought this one and I'd bought this one, I don't know, I guess five or six years ago, maybe, something like that, three or four. Anyway, I, I wanted it because it's a split fence and it's adjustable. Of course, and it's just like my shaper fences, they're, they're adjustable each one if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to use it uh, straight cut a bit and join a piece of wood, you could, no problem. I don't use it for that. I, I was using it for to make molding before I got the shaper. And uh, sometimes you'd make a piece of molding, you'd need an offset on the fence. So anyway, that, I got that, and that gave me the ability to do that. And when I made this, I invested in this Jessen router lift. Uh, and I, I tell you, if you've never, if you've never used a router lift. Uh, if you ever use one, you'll you'll be burnt. Uh, you can take and put your put your wrench in it and run that thing up down and, and get it as accurate as all all get out, and uh, it really worked great. You can you can move your fences back and take and run that thing up, and it'll run it plumb up, stick it plumb out of it there, so you can go right in there with the wrench and change your bits, you don't have to go under, you don't have to do anything, you get it changed out, you can just run it right back down. And it's got a got a big range of travel, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's a right smart uh, range of travel in it there, so, and they work really great, so. Anyway, that's enough of that, I, I just wanted to uh, talk about that little homemade one, so, uh, so I could put that on, on uh, YouTube there, because that uh, did have a request for it, and, I try to fill them. I try to fill all requests. I know uh, probably uh, a lot of people that's uh, familiar with this stuff, you know, they might they probably don't find it interesting. Uh, and I'm not much of a speaker anyway, so. But I, I do like to answer questions when I get them and, and people want to see something, I like to be able to show it to them. Cause, uh, I like to look at uh, I like to look at other people's setups too. Uh, I like to see people's shops and the tools they got in them, and uh, see how they do things. And uh, you, uh, if you want to, 
and you take the time. I mean, I've, I've been doing woodworking for years and years. I, like I said, uh, one of the other videos, I, when I was a teenager, I went to work at sawmill. So I've been, you know, involved in in wood one way or the other all my life, almost. But and I've <clears throat> I've built some pretty complex projects, some pretty simple projects. But no matter what you do, uh, there's always somebody that's got a different way of doing it. And who knows, if, you, uh, if you're interested and you watch, listen, hey, you might find a better way of doing it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.